Today we're going to take a look at this pretty shocking video of a pastor coming out on stage in drag. We're going to talk about churches like this and what you could do to protect yourself and your family and your children. Hide your kids, hide your wives, buckle up. Gospel Tommy, we're back. My name is Russian Kimball. My pronouns are he, him, his. I have the pastor of serving. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor of... Just want to let you know, anytime you walk into church and you hear a pastor say, my pronouns are, you immediately should probably walk out the door. That's my first tip of, tip of advice to watch out for false churches. United Methodist Church in downtown Orlando. And also my... Um... Also, my uh, drag name is still a work in progress. So if you have any ideas, just uh, please let me know. There's one floating around, but we'll, uh, we, I'm not going to share that one with you. But um, uh, I'm still taking other suggestions. It is so good to be with you on this Pride Sunday. And I have to say that I have never looked this fabulous for church before. <laughs> My own church doesn't get this on Sunday morning, so um, one Sunday I might bring this to them. Um, maybe uh, maybe um, disturbing and a few um, a few people in in the congregation, but you know we're working on this together. We're doing this faithful work together of, of being a more progressive and inclusive church, and it's. The craziest thing about the gospel, about Jesus, is he was very exclusive, okay? The Christian faith is not one of inclusivity. Jesus says in his words, not mine, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is very clear. God doesn't mince words, okay? There's no multiple ways to get to heaven. There's no Buddha Allah, uh, Hinduism, Mormonism, all those ways are false. There's only one way. So God is very clear. If you look in the Old Testament and you see the Ten Commandments, God is very clear on what sin is and what is not sin. Um, so this thing about making the church, see, people are trying to make the church, trying to bring the world into the church and try to change scriptures to suit whatever they believe, whatever makes them comfortable. But then at the end of the day, what God are you following but a God you created in your mind? You're not created following the real God. And I need to say thank you to um, Amanda, Amanda Rose for um, doing my makeup this morning because you do not want to see what it would look like insane. if I did it. <laughs> so together is the key word here because I could not be where I am today without community support. I could not be the proud gay man serving as a pastor of a United Methodist congregation in, in Orlando and in Florida in the South. John Wesley would be so sad right now to see this. Without having long-standing allies in the work of inclusion, such as Pastor Andy. <laughs> The sad thing, nothing's being said about the work, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit on the, his life, the way he's feeling like he's starting to look more like Jesus. It's all about community and these people that are basically not loving him. They're basically, it's like if I see someone who's has a bullet wound and they're bleeding out and I don't call 911 and I just say, oh, you're good, you'll be okay. And then they end up dying and I don't call 911. It's like their death is on me if it could have been prevented, right? With like an EMT and a doctor. People are looking at, and, 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 and maybe you've been guilty of this, maybe I have, of not speaking up and with truth and love and telling him, hey, the road to heaven is narrow. Um, you know, the, the road to hell is wide with many people going, you know, so you're lost in your sin. You're lost. There's no forgiveness of sin with you in this lifestyle, unrepentant. You know, you, Jesus said you would know 
his followers by their fruit. And clearly this man is very deceived. So people hear this man in the background, okay, right here smiling. These people that are kind of saying, hey, it's okay to live this life. You know, judgment is on them as well. Okay, for they're not being loving, letting someone stay in the mud and, and not help them to see the light and the true way to Jesus Christ, which comes, which comes through repentance. Okay, right? That's not loving and that's not accepting. And that's the craziest thing about all of this. And the pastors closeted and open in the queer community who have done the work of ministry for decades. I'm sorry, there's so much to say. I don't want to keep pausing, but see, that is what the devil is trying to do and is doing. Trying to get men, women, whoever, to become pastors or to enter the pastoral occupation with these demonic beliefs demonic ideologies like homosexuality and bring that into the church literally you could hear it right here you could hear him saying what they're doing even while facing charges the revoking of their credentials the disgrace and the harm that comes with all of that So I give thanks to them for their legacy, for paving a way for all of us to be here, for me to be here. What's insane is they're trying to make it sound like it's like they're Martin Luther King or something, that there's some injustice, okay? Uh, racial inequality, that was a disgrace. That was a vile, evil thing from the devil, the people who actually were a part of the abolition abolish, abolition movement, I can't even talk. People who tried to abolish slavery, okay? They actually, they were strong believers. They were strong Christians like uh, Wilberforce or whatever. You know what I'm saying, okay? Maybe you don't, but Google it. All right, so it's just, to me, it's just insane that they're trying to compare this to like it's some civil rights thing. Um, but it's like, dude, I'm not going to go into a soccer game with my um, baseball bat and be like, hey, you know, I want to I wanna hit the ball with a bat. They're going to be like, whoa, dude, you're in the wrong game. This is soccer. We kick it with our foot. If you want to play baseball, go to a baseball field. These people are trying to bring their beliefs, and it's like, no, don't try to change what the Bible says. Don't try to change the truth. Go play a different game. Call yourself, make another religion. It is a religion. LGBTism, it is a religion, actually, when you come to think of it, because that's, it's, it's like an occult. And we remember them, those who are not here like and martyrs. did not get to live to see this day who did not get to live to see the day when there was even a pathway to get your credentials back. So we honor and remember them and their work. So I give thanks to God for the brave people who came before me, who risked it all just to live out their God-given call to tell people about Jesus, to tell people about a God who loves them for who they are, who loves me and you for who you are, your embodied self. Embodied self. Okay. God loves you. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Okay. But Jesus died a terrible, horrific death on the cross. And if we could remain in our sins and we don't have to repent, then... God is basically like a child abuser by sending his own son to die when there was no need to, because apparently what this guy's teaching is that you could just, God, you just go to Jesus and uh, all is good and gravy. Like there's no change that has to happen. But the God I know says actually to pick up your cross daily. Um, if you gain the world, you lose your life. If you lose the world, you gain your life. But let's look right here. It talks about that some will depart from the faith. Uh, and this is important to show you sort of where we are as a society. Part of me 
I'm just, I feel so like, you know, I feel for the guy in a sense that like, I feel like he's so lost and I want to have compassion. But at the same time, because I grew up in a family of pastors, my grandpa, my great grandpa, I'm a real estate agent now. Okay. I went to school for theology, but I ended up a realtor and now I'm just doing this because I feel like we need to get the truth out there. So if you want to get the truth out there, like and subscribe before I break my computer in this microphone. So the other part of me goes, man, this guy is evil. His ideas are evil. They're demonic. There's children in this church. There's people in this church being deceived, being led straight to hell. And that upsets me. That makes me angry with a righteous anger. And we see in the last days that the spirit says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. It literally says right there in 1 Timothy chapter 4, this was Paul wrote this, okay, to Timothy, that people will depart from the faith, devoting themselves. You know what the word devoting is? I think of like devoting as like, I'm going to devote myself to losing weight. That's not just like, I'm going to not eat a hamburger one day. That's like a lifestyle change. Okay. And people are making a lifestyle change to sin. Okay. And then teaching this lifestyle to others. Okay. It says defeat deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Those are heavy words. Okay. James actually says that I warn you, right? Those, if you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, okay? So have heart. God is going to make everything right, okay? He's going to wrong all rights. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, like, people, you're going to reap what you sow in essence, okay? Whether you lived a life away from God or following God. And I just felt like this was on my heart. I just want to pray for this individual. I don't even know his name, to be honest, Reverend Rushing Kimball. And maybe you could pray with me. How could we make a, a difference as believers? Well, it's praying, okay? God hears our prayers. Prayer is powerful. Don't skip out of this video right now. Let's not just talk about this individual, and but let's actually pray that his life would be changed. I just, let's do it. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for Reverend Rushing Kimball, God, and I pray for Allendale Church. I pray that everyone there would know the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They would know the truth of what scripture actually says, and I pray that you would convict all of them there. Ultimately, I pray that you would convict people like Rushing Kimball, people who are leading your people astray. I pray that you would bring justice and judgment, whatever, God. You're God and you know what to do, God. But I pray that you would protect those people at that church. I pray places like this would, people would see the lies, the heresy. People would flee from these places. And I pray, God, that you just would strengthen your church again. Uh, help the church not to be so lukewarm and accept the practices from the world and bring them into the church, but help us to be that light that shines on a hill, God. So I pray that this reverend rushing Kimball, that he would find you as his Lord and Savior. And um, in Jesus' name we pray. That's it. Like and subscribe. See you in the next video.